um, it's uh, Luke here from uh, Jim Hippie and uh, Buzz Jim. Uh, I thought I would hop onto the Zoom app, uh, which is a very cool little app I've just discovered, um, in order to do you a short online video uh, and keep you um, educated and entertained whilst we're all uh, in lockdown. Um, if you're anything like me, then you are twiddling your thumbs. So um, what better time to uh, empower yourself with some knowledge. So today, as you can see, um, I am going to talk to you about uh, one of the chapters from my Jim Hippie Fat Loss Handbook, uh, which, uh, by the way, I'm giving out for free at the moment. So if, uh, if you fancy a copy, then just um, uh, drop me a message on Instagram. Just say Jim Hippie Fat Loss Handbook and I will send you access uh, right away. Uh, the chapter here is on uh, what I call mastering calorie quantity, which is uh, essentially talking about calories as if they were a budget just like a financial budget, as if you were managing a financial budget. In particular, um, calorie deficits. Um, for those of you that know me, I am a fat loss uh, and body reshaping coach, um, or the posh, uh, the posh way of putting that is a body recomposition coach. So the things I'm interested in are burning unwanted body fat and, um, and uh, shaping uh, the muscle when those things happen simultaneously, what you get is uh, a process whereby the unwanted body fat is burned away uh, to reveal a brand new body shape. Now, as we know, the body shaping occurs in the gym, but the fat loss that occurs at home, outside of the gym. Um, and uh, when it comes to fat loss, uh, nutrition, uh, specifically calories, is what it's all about. So let's launch in. Oh, it's not working. Ah, there we go. Okay. So this chapter in particular is on um, busting some myths around fat loss. And uh, goodness me, there are lots of them. I should say from the get-go, I should say these images are not mine. They all belong to um, wonderful people uh, online. Um, this one is uh, at the Fitness Chef, uh, a chap called Graham. Um, check him out on Instagram. He's an absolute leader in the field and he's actually just got a new book out. Um, so these images aren't mine. I've merely um, compiled them um, and uh, added some of my own uh, reflections. So the first myth to uh, debunk is this, this notion that um, some fat loss diets are, are fundamentally uh, more effective than others. Uh, whereas the, the truth is, um, all fat loss diets are, are only as effective as their ability to get us into and sustain a, a calorie deficit. Um, and for those of you that uh, don't know what a calorie deficit is, um, what I'm talking about, it's uh, consuming fewer calories than your body needs for activity. Um, and it is the only mechanism through which we can burn body fat, as, as we will talk about um, a little bit more in a minute. Um, suffice to say, no diets have any magical fat burning properties. They are only, they only work because they facilitate and uh, help us sustain a, a state of caloric deficit. So for this reason, on paper, all of them are equally as effective as the other when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the science. Uh, what will make one strategy more effective uh, than another is um, it's one that fits our lifestyle and it's one that fits our dietary preference. Uh, it's one that fits uh, who we are as a person. So uh, on that level, some diets are better uh, than others. But um, first, uh, first major point is that no diets have any magical fat burning properties and on paper they are all equally effective. So for that reason don't invest in the diet, invest in the underlying mechanism behind fat loss and that mechanism is uh, a calorie deficit. And you've got this little cartoon here where the chap on the left is saying I've tried absolutely everything and I just can't lose weight and the chap on the right, who's a little bit more informed, is saying, have you actually tried tracking your calories to ensure that you are in a calorie deficit? 
presumably. So as I said, all diets work because of the same underlying mechanism, which is reducing your calorie intake uh, to get you into a state of caloric deficit. Um, as we know, there are lots of different types of uh, diets out there um, that can help facilitate the calorie deficit. A very popular one at the moment is, um, is fasting diets or intermittent fasting. Um, these uh, can work. Any diet can work. Um, the way fasting diets work is they reduce the time in the day that uh, you will be consuming food. So, uh, for example, if 24 hours in a day, um, uh, if you don't eat for 10 of them, then you're much less likely, in theory, to uh, consume um, above your calorie budget than if you were eating for, for 15 hours of the day. Um, so it's, there's nothing magic about it. It's just this, this idea that if you reduce the window of time that you are eating, then you are less likely then to consume over your calorie budget. Moving on, um, again, low carb, low carb diets uh, have been very popular over uh, recent decades, um, possibly less so uh, these days. Uh, but again, there's nothing magic about carbs. They don't have any innate uh, ability to uh, cause us to put on unwanted body fat. Um, they work through the same mechanism as anything else, which is... Um, uh, by reducing our carbohydrate intake we then reduce our calorie intake and then hopefully that takes us into a calorie deficit. Um, uh, keto obviously completely eliminates carbohydrates. Um, vegan diets uh, which will promote fat loss again they work through the same mechanism. Calorie deficit when you're eating plant-based foods you know lots of vegetables, lots of fiber, lots of volume there, you're less likely to uh, consume above your calorie requirements if you're eating these kinds of food. Um, the paleo is another example. So all, all, all these different methods of achieving this um, uh, calorie deficit. Um, on paper, as I said, not one is, is, is better than the other one. The key is finding one that you can actually um, sustain um, and the one that's going to enable you to maintain your, your current quality of life. Um, for me, this means removing anything that's extreme. Um, a classic example, in my opinion, is, is keto. Um, I, I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not bashing keto, but certainly anecdotally, for anyone that I've ever worked with, um, it's not sustainable. Um, so for me, the, the headline is, sustainability and uh, that usually means moderation uh, as it says at the bottom here people don't fail with diets people fail to maintain the diet for the long term so yeah uh, fatty diets um these are these kind of short-term solution uh approaches which, which again they work through exactly the same mechanism uh, which is the calorie deficit but um, they're, they're often very aggressive the calorie deficits and, and they might lead to short-term results they might lead to short-term uh, uh, weight gain um, even though a lot of it um, certainly in, in the short term is likely to be water but um, you know and, and for some people in some situations that might be um, all you want you know if you've got a, I don't know, a wedding coming up or um, you're gonna be have your top off somewhere or you've got I don't know your swinging event coming up then maybe, maybe a short-term solution is what you want but for most people uh, we're looking for something a little bit more um, sustainable so uh, yeah going through this list here you know short fatty diets extreme diets you're talking short-term solutions then they're not sustainable they're often things that you suffer through uh, for a short time just to get to a certain point they're often not enjoyable um they often do impact quality of life you know you talk about sacrifice uh, overly restrictive and, and and they do require uh, willpower and um as anyone knows willpower is uh, limited in limited supply moving on